thank you again for joining us for the mayor's brief. Um, I'm not the mayor. I'm Mayor Pro Tem <laughs> T.J. Walker, and I'm here again in the mayor's stead in order to uh, have a discussion here on the mayor's brief with my counterpart and colleague, Councilman Lige Daltrich. So glad to have you again, yeah, sir. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me, TJ. I yeah, appreciate it. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, I'm, I'm glad to be here uh, as well. Jumping right into it, Committee of the Whole yesterday. Uh, Committee of the Whole meeting was at 5 p.m. on the 13th, and I think we had a productive meeting. Uh, we moved bars, taverns, and the nightclub ordinance into the consent agenda on the regular scheduled meeting right. um, and jumped right into the Outer Loop Southeast Connector conversation with Brad Kerr and did you have anything you, you know that you thought was inter interesting about that no it's just a I think the big thing to iterate is, is it's a long process it's not something that's going to happen quick and we and it's really the DOT that drives it we do have a a say so to speak in the community we want to give the community a say but if it happens it, it's really going to be up to DOT to, to place it in their budget and um, but I think it would be a a great thing for for the for Rocky Mount and for the community that it and that it goes through because it economic development. That's it. You know. That's it. That's it. And I think uh, we can help out and with DOT. You know, having them come to a committee to hold, having a presentation, but then also keeping this um, this idea or concept fresh on right. their project list as they share with you and I both that they do have a project list all across the state. Right. And so um, I think Rocky Mountain's in a great place uh, location-wise, proximity to 64 95 to where we're able to have some of their, their top priority on some of their projects. So be I interesting agree. to see. I agree wholeheartedly. Yes, sir. And Falls Road and the Depot Park, uh, the conceptual design was uh, very, very interesting to see. Uh, looks like a great concept, a great idea. Uh, looks like it had a lot of uh, community and, and stakeholder input as far as, you know, what right. needs to go through, there through the concept. Um, and so I was excited about it and look forward to really sharing some time out there downtown uh, once it's underway. Yeah, I think it's an opportunity for, for people to come together and then also for the event center. You know, we've, we've both been to the event center, and in between games, people like to get outside and it'd be a place for people to congregate and food trucks and bands and whatever um, may happen. And you could even, I guess, somewhat do something like the farmer's market even there. So it's a, it's yeah. a great opportunity. It'll, it'll it just enhance downtown, and um, looking forward to it. That's it. That's it. Uh, you know, our downtown is, is growing and developing, and, uh, you know, we have a ways to go, but uh, we encourage everyone to stay involved and stay committed to listening and learning and also providing input, you know, for what you want to see downtown. Because right. I think if people provide input about what they want, then that will entice them and encourage them to, to go downtown, right. you know, because we'll have different amenities that constituents are really asking for. Right. Um, to and and then plus when you have a say or, or you feel like someone's listening to you, then you take ownership as well. Yeah. And you yeah. can be an advocate. And I think that's what we we can do a better job in Rocky Mountain across the entire city with that. And I think we are doing a, uh, we're getting better at that. Yeah. And, and I'm, yeah. I'm thankful for it. Definitely, definitely. We're, we are doing a better job uh, in these past three years um, of working on that communication and getting that buy-in. Right. Uh, the energy assistance rebate and loan policy, uh, that created a little conversation between uh, a few of us there. Um, overall, I think, you know, it's a great idea, uh, right. something that's, that's needed, and I think it's something that will be helpful. I think uh, our conversation was more about the method of how we get right. there. Um, and, you know, even in working through that, uh, I'm excited about seeing, you right. know, how we can figure out uh, the best method, you know, for the sake of citizens and for the right. sake of the city. Right. And and I appreciate the opportunity to, you know, have ideas thrown around during the Committee of the Whole because some some will stick and some won't. And, and that's the beauty of, a you know, a city council and a mayor. I mean, that's what we're there for. You know, and I brought up the fact that maybe we could leverage some of our funds, you know, with a, with a private, you know, whether it be a foundation or a bank or, or some sort of uh, entity, because we have limited funds, but we have a lot of need. Mm -hmm. And so if we could just uh, leverage what we have to assist more people, then yeah. then I think it would just be an opportunity, not not only for this, because we're talking about increasing the, the loans and such for, for HVAC and, and windows and um, and I, I guess insulation, some other things from, I think, was it 7500 to 12500 Yeah. And once you do that, you've certainly limited who you can help. But if you could leverage the funds, 
mm-hmm. then you could help a, a lot more people and have more impact. Yeah, yeah, I think that was uh, up to twelve five. Right. All those matching rebate programs, some right. urgent repair. Um, I think that increased to fifteen. So from twelve five to fifteen, okay, I think is what what it was originally. Um, twelve five was the original match. Right. So um, yeah, like you said, I mean, you know, we we've, we've got a lot of need, and right. uh, if there are ways that we can maximize addressing the need and also leverage what we have, you know, that help. That's a win win for, for, right. for both parties, and I think. Uh, you know, I think that's the best method and best approach to take. And so uh, looking forward to it. I, I said, you know, gave my spiel and my comments about it. And I hope we're able to work towards, right. you know, making that happen. Um, it may not be all of what we would like to see, but I think right. it, uh, if we just continue, like you said, everyone has their ideas out. You know, staff will find a way to take all of what's been said and create the right. best package. So right. uh, we, we're, we're trusting in our staff for that. And again, we're thankful to have interim matter Javarni for the time that we have him um, yeah. um, again and that uh, I think I've thrown it in now Polly Hire said that we've got about 15 applicants that have already right. applied for the city manager search and they've sent out the survey to all of the uh, constituents um, mm-hmm. that are I guess plugged in on that that network I'm not sure how that works totally I got yeah. the email for the survey uh, so <laughs> I'm signed up somehow uh, yeah. don't know how but uh, I'm there. So if anybody has any questions about right. it, you can contact the city city manager's office. Um, we and you'll be able to be pointed in the right direction for how to have that survey. Right. And I, you know, I I have an email list of about six or eight hundred folks, and I sent it out. And um, you know, and I'm sure you did the same. Yep. So yep. Um, it's it's and and that's the other thing. You know, the public needs to have a say. Who's mm-hmm. going to be our next city manager? And it's important. That you and I and the rest of the city council and the mayor, you know, listen to the public because it's not just the the, the person that you that we're going to have to yeah. to deal with. It's it's the entire city. I see. And, um, and I and and I think we've mentioned this before on the show. I think we we're at a critical time in our city, and it's probably going to be while we serve on the city council, one of the most important decisions that we're going to make as as council people. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm yeah. excited about the challenge. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, and uh, we're weeks and months away from the right. decision, so <laughs> uh, it's exciting times. <clears throat> uh, RMPD June report, Chief Hassel gave his report, police report, uh, crimes generally down low, lower for the month of June, uh, so that was good to hear. I think right. we had two uh, actual murders. I think one was domestic, or two were domestic. Um, right but nothing um, extraneous as far as outrageous crime or any type of hate crime. Uh, so that was good to hear that everything right. is generally low. Technology that the police department is using right. is working to help solve some crimes, and so it sounds like they've got a, a good grasp on things. Right. Uh, always room for improvement, but uh, overall, I think Chief and his staff are doing a great job. I think the Chief's doing a wonderful job, and, and I was intrigued with the little presentation we had on the uh, the drone. Yeah. Uh, that, and the drone's already been used. It's it's helped find someone that was having some an episode men, mental type episode, and and it I think saved the person, which is which is awesome. That's mm-hmm. a great That's great tool of technology, and um, so I'm excited that we we have that and we can utilize that, and that the police department's using utilizing it, and uh, along with the cameras. Yeah, I mean we've already solved a couple of crimes due to the cameras, um, and kudos to the chief and and his staff. That's it. That's it, man. It it shows that, you know, technology does indeed work uh, when we don't abuse it and we (laughs) utilize it the right way. I echo that with you as well. (laughs) Don't abuse it. That's it. That's it. Uh, Moving over to our regular scheduled agenda, uh, our regular uh, council meeting uh, agenda. I want to start with the uh, fireworks display that we'll have all across the city. The city will have their fireworks uh, July the 1st. Um, and then there's a rain date of July the 9th, and it'll be at the sports complex where it's held every year. Uh, Rise Church will have uh, their fireworks exposition uh, Saturday, July 2nd. And Inglewood Baptist Church will have um, our, because I'm now a member there in Inglewood, <laughs> we will have our uh, firework display on July 4th, the actual uh, holiday that Sunday. Uh, so there's plenty of fireworks going on that weekend. Uh, so we encourage everyone to find a spot if you don't have anything going on, but find your spot here in the city and go fellowship and enjoy um, others during our Independence Holiday. Right. And be safe. 
And be safe. That's it. That's it. Chief <laughs> did talk about that, how they will have officers in, um, you know, higher areas that had marked shootings and not fireworks right. during 4th of July. So those of you that shoot during 4th of July, be mindful that Chief and, and the staff will be out monitoring uh, high areas. So uh, <laughs> be mindful of that. So Definitely. what goes up must come down. That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Man, I, <laughs> I don't want it coming down to anyone's home or, or, or anyone's property or, or any individual. That's uh, right. For that matter. So definitely be safe uh then we we moved to uh we had a few uh project ordinance amendments budget ordinance amendments and we moved into uh the public hearing for the budget i think there were um three individuals that came up for public hearing for the budget i think it was um adrian copeland dr kim Koo, and council elect uh harris i believe were the three that okay. we had uh for the public hearing and uh some of what um, I think the concerns of it's pretty much a, a two two way street from um, Adrian and Dr. Ku. I think they were sort of on the opposite ends of the street, and uh, Mr. Harris was somewhere uh, leaning in the middle of their both of their uh, different opinions. And so, um, you know, basically our, our budget is um, it has been presented to us. Um, I know you've questioned some of the different uh, methods of the admin fees, correct? Um, and I, I'll let you elaborate on that if you like. But um, overall, the budget, uh, you know, Ken has gave his presentation and. Um, and along with staff and they say hey, everything looks substantial we're in good financial shape uh, and so um, you know I think the budget will pass uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it'll be unanimously but I think the budget will pass but yeah. but we did have that public hearing portion right where we had some comment yeah as it stands now um, and I, I'm not hiding the fact that I'm not happy with the spending that we have I think I think we do spend we keep on adding to our expenditures mm -hmm. and we we are not uh currently growing necessarily population wise we do we are growing uh with i think we've had 90 homes built thus far this year and you know, we've got some commercial there's a lot of positive things mm -hmm. but one of my big concerns is is the pool that we have from the ad administrative fees from the um enterprise fund which are utilities and that's increased from 2017 to to what's proposed in, in this current budget. It's increased by 83 percent, so going from around 13 million to around 23 million, and and that's a that's a pretty hefty lift yeah. to support our spending habits. And and you know right now we're in a recession. I mean mm -hmm. we've we've already have a bear market. It's it's you know it's already been proven we have a bear market, and I think we need to be prudent. And that's my concerns. Yeah. Um, you, you know, and and and. We're not taking away from our expenditures. We keep on adding to them, and so I, you know, we need just need to be mindful. Um, so I've taken that that stand, and 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 I feel comfortable taking that because yeah. um, we need to be physically responsible. And uh, but to your point, we are financially sound right now. Yeah. But yeah. you've got to you've got to be prepared for for future. For future. That's it. So well, man, well I, I appreciate you, and, and again appreciate your stance and your your conversation around your stance and uh i think we're always able to have that communication and to be able to just you know talk out you know right. wh why we feel the way we feel and and then at the end of the day regardless of how we feel we move on to the next thing so That's uh you know always thank you thank you for that uh the consideration of the minutes and recommendations uh we, we went ahead and approved those and then we got into uh several uh rezoning requests right I believe we had a total of five, maybe, uh, that were presented last night, right. and out of the five, four of them were rejected, and one was tabled. And so I brought up uh, the concern, as I did in the last meeting, about you know a more aggressive approach of communication with staff and uh, constituents, you right. know, because we are changing, times are changing, and. I think development will not look the same as it did for those that may have been living here for even if you've been living in your the way you've been living 10 years you know, right there have been no changes in 10 20 years as far as neighborhoods and the structures of the neighborhood and so as you look at changing that structure and and that new development right. taking place and especially a lot of those low density areas it causes constituents to have sort of a 
a concern, you know, right. because it's, it's, it's change that may take place. And right. if they're not aware, if they, they haven't had enough conversation, if they, had, if they haven't had enough input, enough feedback to exactly know what's going on and what does it mean, then it raises alarms for constituents to say, right. hey, look, we don't want anything to do with it. Right. So, um, you know, I'm hoping we can address that on our end with communication with staffing. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, it's communication, and I think we can do a better job around that. You know, I served on the planning board for a long period of time. I can't remember exactly. And, and you know, the planning board, they do study, and they, they are aware of the, the the rules and regulations behind what's going on. And to your point, things are changing, and, and you know, I, someone recently said, you know, about the NIMBY effect, you know, not, not in my backyard, which I— you have to respect where someone's coming from because, you know, most people, their largest investment is their home. But to your point, if we can include more people on the front end and have mm-hmm. a conversation, you know, going back to what we were talking about earlier, people can have buy-in. Um, you know, one of the ones that, that that I did vote against last night was some development uh, going R R6 MFA. Um, next to some some R10 which is single yeah. family and um, you, you know that I, I personally I, I usually take I give precedence to the to, to existing um, what has been there and, it, and mm-hmm. it just didn't seem a good fit um, yeah. to change that rezoning there but I think we had one that was tabled that probably will after they meet will come back um, and likely likely get approved but the go, but from the city standpoint, we only contact the neighbors that are adjacent to the property. I think, as I mentioned with the communications piece, most people don't find out until after the fact. Yeah. So if we can be proactive and send out something, you know, maybe a block away or half mm-hmm. a mile away, you know, I think we'll have better response. And if we can get it to the planning board where they have those discussions before it comes to us, I think it would be better. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And I, I appreciate that and, uh, you know, my sentiments uh, exactly. Uh, item 15 was around uh, uh, the lease agreement that we have with the hunting property for hunting sure. purposes, and that is for private hunting purposes. <laughs> I want to make, make sure I clear that up. We were joking yeah. earlier that I may have said uh, something different on the last show, but that is for private purposes. <laughs> private, yeah. Private purpose, private usage. So right. uh, don't get caught trespassing on, on private properties. Right. Um, item 16, the Housing Incentive Grant Program Agreement with Berkshire. Uh, community association. This is a project uh, I believe that's been going on for a couple years now. There was some halt there due to COVID and um, due to uh, a lot of uh, some of the material and just labor um, uh, challenges that we had. But $150,000 for new construction of a single family home. And uh, they have uh, in the bank there $100,000 of their own uh, investment that they're putting up. And I think Tom Harris made a good point of saying he wanted to see some of the investment um, of Berkshire first before right. the city just um, expended the, the, uh, the, the dispersed the funds to, to Berkshire. Um, so, you know, I, I think it was a valid point. I don't know if we would do that or not. Um, as they're looking to to go ahead and to complete this project. But I think the project in itself um, will be a great project for that association and also be able to um, allow a lot of the different neighborhood associations uh, surrounding Berkshire to see how they can take ownership and to develop their own communities. Right. Well, I I don't disagree necessarily with with the concept, but what I – my concerns is is – you, you know, or, or around yeah. the grant process. Uh, it's a city council grant, um, and I do have concerns with that, and I know you've told me that you're going to address that. Um, yeah. And I appreciate that. That'll be one step. But, you know, the other thing is, you know, um, this is a, a single home for a single family, and, we, and we, you know, we're a population of 54,000 people plus, plus or minus, and, you know, Helping, helping one house. We got a lot of houses that need help. Yeah. So th- that's another concern of mine. So I did vote no against it, and um, for those reasons, and even you know, and even one hundred fifty thousand dollars for for one home for the city to invest in that, and you know, it's um, it just fundamentally, I have some issues with it. So yeah. I voted no against it. Definitely. And, um, you know, like you said, we're going to work to make sure staff can start um, 
having some type of marketing and branding around projects, especially our grant projects, that show the return on the investment so that, you know, constituents can know, hey, this is exactly what's going on. This is exactly what we're getting. I think we have to do a better job as that as a staff and as a city of being able to display and show that, you know, out front rather than, like you said, having something on the agenda and you not really be able to see the return, you know, anywhere yeah. uh, digitally or, you know, don't have it, you know, at your graph. So I think that'll be great. Uh, 17 was uh, the five-year agreement with for public service for the landfill treatment, wastewater treatment plant. Um, was, uh, anticipated there to be about a million dollars annually. Uh, I didn't have anything on that. Unless you... No. Okay. Um, 18 uh, talked about some of the uh, demolition of dilapidated dwellings, and I think that put us in a good conversation to talk about uh, some of the homes we have that need to be dilapidated, you know, for new construction or be able to have, you know, maybe especially at 413 and 415, uh, I think Councilman Knight said someone may have interest in those, but when we have those homes that are adjacent to each other um, or we have those blocks that are adjacent to, that's a great opportunity for redevelopment uh, to be able to be placed uh, for housing, you know, because we, we do have a housing crisis. But see, that's where I can get on board if you do a neighborhood at a time. Yeah. As opposed to, to one home, I mean, people want to see impact. And I think if, if you know, interim manager Varney, t- we were, during our retreat, we were able to go on the, on the bus ride in that neighborhood, actually. And, and I yeah. think the vision that he presented to us is a great vision. Mm-hmm. And I think it's an opportunity where we can take, you know, blocks at a time, similar to what happened on Bill Street. Yeah. Um, and that's something I think the public and, and, and even someone like me who has concerns can get behind that. So, you know, um, we'll see. We'll see. Well, it's good, man. Um, you know, we talked about it at a retreat. We took the tour. Um, and I think that's something that will be coming up right. here in the near future where we begin to talk about some of those larger projects that we can right. do uh, as a city and as a council. Right. Uh, man, everything else was sort of um, – I think the lease agreement for the city we have, there's another downtown business coming. Uh, ice cream shop will be coming. They signed right. a three-year lease. And I was actually talking um, to the attorney today, and I think Ben Braddock, that handles some of these deals for us. And um, they're going to work on a, a quicker way to be able to get some of these contracts done because people have to wait a long time just waiting on the attorney to draft up a template. Um, we're, th- we're thankful for our attorney, but uh, he's agreed to, to have an a, a actual uh, template um, that will be in place and being could just take that template and, and have it for each each a different project and, you know, customize it to whatever a transaction he needs to. So that'll help speed up. So that was great right. to, to be able to hear uh, for that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the donation of property, um, that's that's going to be um, good for, that's in my ward, South Grace, Buick Street. Right. So it's going to help expand the new um, construction for the fire department there on Grace Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was glad to see um, that uh, individuals wanted to donate uh, the property over to us as a city. Right. Uh, Shaq's After Dark, I think there was one comment that came up about the city buying property for um, above the appraisal value or right. the, the appraised value, and um, you know, I didn't really. I, did you? Did you have any concern with? I didn't really have too much concern with us purchasing for over the appraised value. I think it was ten thousand over. Um, well, I, typically, you know, a bank's not going to loan anything over the appraised value. So, yeah. you know, I I think it's a valid point, and I asked the question uh, because it was asking public comment. I think and. Um, but then Mr. Varney did come back and say that they did admit one of the, the bathrooms was overlooked. So I was fine with that because I think if we if we start paying over appraised value, then we're setting a bad precedent mm-hmm. because you got to you, you can't forget you're dealing with one in front of you. Yeah. What's, what's coming behind that one? Yeah. yeah. And so we have to be careful with that. And and and, and I appreciated the person bringing that up. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's something we need to keep in mind. So, yeah, because what what we do for one, we'll have to do for all. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and who and and you never know when you get someone that want to string you out a little further than you. Right. But I think that's why we negotiate too, though. I mean, uh, you know, I think we at the end of the day have the total authority in the negotiation to be right. able to say, 
you know, hey, look, this is our limit, and this is what we're willing to offer you. And, uh, you know, it comes down to take it or leave it. Uh, or even eminent domain. I mean, we have. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not a big fan of eminent domain, but <laughs> we have the overall authority at the end of the day. But I, I do, I do see the, I do see the point. Um, right. I didn't have an issue with it because I feel we can sort of monitor and make sure that we don't allow it to get out of hand as it moves further down the line. But I definitely do see the point and and uh, there's sure. a, and the validity in it. Same thing with St. John A.M.E. Zion. Uh, you know, it was appraised. Um, at a 484,000 was the praise of praise value, and um, I think that's what we offered them. Yeah, we know. we offered. It's just um, you know the, we've got to make the event center successful. It's here, and and I want it to be successful. It's just yeah. that's another expense going into the uh, event center column. So. That's it, uh, man. That's it. We, you know, I'm not gonna belabor that anymore. I just, I just let that one sit there for a little it, while. It's, it's going to cost, a, you know. It's, it's, it's going to. Cut. But to that point, um, the economic development that you know the event center has caused has been tremendous. I believe GM said it's about 1.7 million dollars last year of just economic development of impact. You know around not only the city of Rocky Mount, but that was calls from just event center turnout. Uh, so, you know, that's huge to hear when it's $1.7 million. Uh, and I think that was over uh, the few months that it was operating after COVID, I think was that report uh, that we saw. And we, we probably need to get them to come in for committee of the whole just right. to share that to the public because that's been a few months, you know, sometime last year. I don't yeah. think I was mayor pro tem. Uh, when we had that presentation, right? Uh, so it's, <clears throat> but it's it's good to to know, and it, it wasn't on the agenda. But I mean, at some point, you know, we talk about parking, you know, downtown, and uh, we've talked about the parking that we've talked about a hotel. You know, how 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 important do you think those are as factors for you know development <laughs> with the with the event center? I, I think that, and, and we've touched on it in some previous shows, I believe. But I think you know the. Uh, the, the idea behind the event center, the streetscape, Douglas Block, um, was to be catalyst for, for economic development for a private enterprise to come in. Yeah. I think the question we need to ask ourselves is how much more does the city need to put in, invest in downtown before private takes over? Mm. And for, from a taxpayer standpoint, whether it's from a local level, federal level, or even state level, the taxpayers invest a lot of money downtown. And I think you know, it's important for the private sector to come in. And and even when we were going through the study of the event center, um, and I still have the studies um, that show that we, we had plenty of parking without a, a parking garage, because I, you know, when that discussion was going on, it was brought up about the parking. And and the idea was, no, we're, we're fine. We've got plenty of parking. But now mm-hmm. we're coming back saying, no, we don't have enough parking. Yeah. So I think, and you're talking about buy-in from the public, yeah. When when you're saying one thing here and then not even two or three years later you're saying another thing, yeah, I, you know, yeah. and they're the concerns I have, uh, and I think the re- a lot of the public has, yeah. Um, but I I think it's time for private to come in. Well, Councilman Daltridge, our time is far spent, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate you, and uh, I'm glad Likewise. we're able to co-host today, and yeah, uh, thank you for your time, and I hope uh, those of you that are viewing and watching enjoy today. Mm-hmm.